Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we will study about routing in ASP.NET Core. Not only that, we will also learn about tag helpers and reserve view engine in ASP.NET Core. My name is Umair and I welcome you all on my YouTube channel. If you are new to my YouTube channel, then kindly subscribe it for more and updated videos. Let's start. Routing is responsible for mapping incoming browser requests to specified MVC controller actions. Whenever a request is made from a browser to our application, it is matched according to the URL patterns registered in application. As you can see that in ASP.NET Core, we register routing using map controller route method. It takes two parameter, one is name, the other one is pattern. In this example, I am showing you the default route. Its name is default and its pattern is controller home action index and id question mark. It means that home is the default controller, index is a default action and id is optional. This question mark sign means it is the optional one. Let's have a look on examples. The default route has many variants. If the URL is like this, it will target home controller with index action. Because these two are default, controller is home, action is index and they are default values. And if you target home slash empty, then it will automatically target home and index. Because index is the default method for any controller. And if you have home slash index in URL, you will target home controller with index action. So basically, all these three routes are equal in action. Lastly, we are passing an ID at the end of the route like home controller index action and the last parameter it means controller is home action is index and id is 3 you can see that this id is present in the last row and we got it because we need it now in the previous three routes we didn't use it so this id was optional let's have a look on a few other routes If you have a book controller and you are targeting index action, then slash book will work for your URL. If you want to target the create action of book, then you have to write slash book slash create in your URL. And lastly, if you are targeting the edit action with id parameter, then you have to write book slash edit slash that id. It can be any number. So basically, the pattern that we use controller, action, and ID. By default, we have home controller, index action, and ID. Now let's have a look on our code and implement some routing. This is a project that we created last time. And you can see that here we have a home controller. And this home controller has two action results. One is index, the other one is privacy. We are currently not using this error one. For simplicity, I will remove some extra code here. Now you can see that we have a home controller here. It is inherited from controller class. Okay. And we have an index action. It is returning a view. And we have a privacy action. It is returning a view. Okay. Now if I want to return a string value, let's say this is a method. Or I can say that get date. Okay. So I will return date time. 
dot now dot to string i just want to convert it into string value okay so let me run the application Now here we have our URL. If I write home slash get date, the name of that action. Okay, you can see that we have got current date that is 18 January 12:18 a.m. Okay, so this is the current time here. Similarly, if I want to target any other action method, if I target index, it will go to the default page. If I target only home, it will go to the default page. If I don't write home here, it will again target the default page. Default page is home controller and its index action. Okay. You might be wondering from where this welcome is coming. If you have a default application and you right click on your index and from here you go to the view here we have got a view and here it is written welcome learn asp.net core web apps okay so this is how it is displaying the data lastly if i want to target this privacy action i will use home controller slash privacy okay this is our privacy page is being rendered here right lastly i want to create a new controller here it will be an empty controller add its name will be imply controller okay just remember that the name of the controller will be concatenated with the controller itself okay this is our controller naming conventions works add here we have got a default page that is index what if I create a new action result? You might be wondering that why I am using this I action result. If I want to return a view page, then I have to use this I action result. It is a return type. Okay. From this create, right click, add view, reserve view, empty, add. Now its name is index, but which name we got? Create. Okay so i will write here create add now you can see that this imply controller has a create method and we created a view for this one here but in the views folder you can notice that an imply folder got created automatically and it has a create file create.cshtml okay this is a view file now here i want to write some html code okay 
will be fine. Just a sample code, create employee. I will save this one. Now let me run the application. If I want to target that employee slash create action, okay, you can see that we have got that heading here. And if I want to target the index page, we got an exception, okay? Why? Because no index view is present in this folder. That's why we got an exception. So if a route doesn't match, we get an error and that error will be 404 that route not found. Okay, this is how routing works in ASP.NET Core. Next, we have tag helpers in ASP.NET Core. Tag helpers enable server side code to participate in creating and rendering HTML elements in razor files razor files are your views and in those views we used tag helpers and those tag helpers enable server side code in html elements okay if we want dynamic model binding we can use tag helpers we will study about dynamic model binding in the later videos as you can see that we have ASP area, ASP controller, ASP action in an anchor tag, a link. So this link is basically targeting home controller index action. We are not using href here. So we use tag helpers for this purpose. Let's have a look on a few examples. In HTML, we have anchor tag with href attribute and it is targeting a speaker controller but if you want to target using asp.net core you will use asp controller asp action and you will pass the values of controller and action within these tools and in asp.net core you will use asp controller asp action for the purpose of href okay now if we have a form tag and you mostly use form method post action demo register means demo folder register page but in asp.net core we use asp controller asp action and then method so there are many examples of tag helpers in asp.net core we will use them in our code step by step lastly let's know about razor view engine Razor in ASP.NET Core is a markup syntax for embedding .NET base code into web pages. Razor syntax consists of Razor Markup, C Sharp, HTML. Razor Markup starts with at the rate sign. You have mostly noticed that views in MVC have .cs HTML extension. This extension basically refers to razor pages and we use razor syntax in these files. You can write any c .net code with HTML in views. Let's have a look in our code. As you can see that in views folder, we have imply home shared. Blank side, we have cshtml, view start cshtml. In view imports, you can notice that we are using MVC tag helpers and this is how we access tag helpers for our views. In the home folder, you can see that we have an index page and in this index page, we have this razor markup and it is using a bracket because you can have multiple lines data. 
Now this view data is another property used in MVC. We will study about that. But for now, I just want to show you something. If I want to write a C sharp code here, hello world, we are learning ASP.NET Core. So this data is defined here and I want to call it in my HTML code. I will use a break here and here I will use a p tag, paragraph tag and here I will call that data string. I can call that data string by using razor markup. And here we can call this data string. Now if I run this application, You can see that we have got that string being rendered in p tag, paragraph tag. So we can use any C sharp .NET code in these files, CSHTML, razor files.